when you read the Old Testament, you see the greatness of God in a way that is not really shown in the New Testament, except in the book of Revelation. So Jesus, when Jesus came, he lowered himself so much, he humbled himself so much that sometimes we forget that he is God. Because he came as a man, he almost looks like he's one of us sometimes. But when you read the Old Testament, it, it is so clear how mighty God is. It's so clear. So let me read a couple of scriptures first. Isaiah chapter 40, verse from verse 12. It says, this is describing God. It says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? So all the water that is on earth, God can hold it. It's not in his whole hand, you know? Do you know what the, it means by the hollow of your hand, the center of your hand, the deepest part? When you spread out your palm, you know that part that is in the middle, that is a bit deep, that small part of your hand, that just the center, that round, that small circle in the center. The Bible said all the waters, all the oceans can fit in the hollow of God's hand. Then he says, and meted out heaven with the span so sometimes when the bible talks about heaven it's not talking about heaven where god dwells it means the sky so the bible says things like all the birds that fly in the heavens so it's not saying that birds are flying in heaven it's talking of the sky so the bible says that god can measure the sky you know how you take a tape roll and you can measure your height if you're a tailor you can measure someone's the length of their arms the Bible says God can measure the, the sky. It says, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. He knows how much dust is on the earth. It says, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. It now goes on to say that, behold, the nations as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance so you know how dust small dust is compared to you you know you just pick one small speck of dust the bible didn't say i am like dust it doesn't say you are like dust it says the nations are as dust so the whole world all the nations of the world combined Compared to God, they are dust. Then he didn't just say they are dust. He says they are counted as the small dust. So when you are measuring dust, you don't have to look for the small ones. And he says all the nations compared to God as small dust. So sometimes when you imagine God, you imagine God like sitting on the throne then when he wants to come into the world, he will come into the world. That's God reducing himself so he can enter the world. The Bible says all nations, they are small dust compared to God. So for God to come into the world, he has to squeeze himself to a size that, can, that the world can accommodate. He now says all nations before him are as nothing. Like, you can't even compare the world to God. As big as this world, they say there is nothing. He now says they are counted to him less than nothing. Isaiah was confused. He saw the greatness of God. He first said, we are as nothing. All the nations are as nothing. And it was like, nothing is not even enough. He says, we are less than nothing. How can you be less than nothing? He says, compared to God, all of us are less than nothing. Then if you read Isaiah 44, God now begins to introduce himself to us, to give us his CV. <laughs> it says, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. It says, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth 
by myself. So when you just read it, it says that stretch it forth the heavens alone, that spread it abroad the earth by myself. You just think, oh, God created the world. That's not what he's saying. That's not the emphasis. The emphasis is the alone and by myself. It says, I stretch forth the heavens alone. I spread abroad the earth by myself. Do you know how mighty you have to be to construct the entire world alone? Do you know how many people it takes to build a, a, a car? One car. Do you know how many people it takes to build a small house? Just a small three-bedroom bungalow. Do you know how many men it takes? God says, I, sp- I spread abroad the earth by myself. <laughs> so when you comprehend the greatness of God, it makes your challenge look very little you know sometimes you have challenges they look that like they are so big it's like you are just praying forever the challenge is even bigger than god it's because you've lost sight of the greatness of god when you see how mighty god is it makes your challenge it dwarfs your challenge it makes it so small it's like this god this God that made the whole earth by himself, you can't even go around the world. It's very difficult. Even Nigeria is large. All the animals, all the mountains, all the hills, the sun, the moon, the stars, God beat his chest. He said, only me did this. So sometimes it pays to, to read the Old Testament and meditate on the greatness of God. Anyways, I just thought to share that. Let's go into what we came here to read. What we came here to, what we what we actually came to read. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for everyone that's here. And everyone who will, who will join us later. We ask everyone that comes to this room be blessed. Let all their cares fall at your feet let your greatness and your glory be seen in their life in jesus name i pray amen so we're going to read genesis 30 and 31 so we'll not read the whole of 30 because we discussed part of 30 yesterday last week not yesterday the part of genesis 30 that talks about um leah and rachel struggling for for jacob's affection with their children we discussed that extensively last week so we'll discuss this we'll read and discuss the second part of genesis 30 then we'll read genesis 31 so if you have your bible please open so we can read together um genesis 30 i'm reading the amplified and I'm reading from verse 25. So I'll start from Genesis 30, verse 25. It says, Now when Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go back to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know the work which I have done for you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, stay with me, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He said, Name your wages, and I will give it. Jacob answered him, You know how I have served you, and how your possessions and your cattle and sheep and goats have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased and multiplied abundantly. And the Lord has favored you with blessings wherever I turned. But now, when shall I provide for my own household? Liban asked, What shall I give you? Jacob replied, You shall give me, you shall not give me anything. But if you will do this one thing for me, I will again pasture and keep your flock. 
let me pass let me pass through your entire flock today removing from it every speckled and spotted sheep and every dark or black one among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats and those shall be my wages so my honesty will be evident for me later when you come concerning my wages every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and dark among the young lambs if found with me shall be considered stolen and liban said good let it be done as you say so on that same day liban removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted every one with white on it and all the dark ones among the sheep and put them in the care of his sons. And he put a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob was then left in the care of the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took branches of fresh poplar and almond and plane trees and peeled white stripes in them, exposing the white in the branches. Then he set the branches which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, and they mated and conceived when they came to drink. So the flocks mated and conceived by the branches, and the flocks gave birth to streaked, speckled, and spotted offspring. Jacob separated the lambs, and he made the flocks face toward the streaked and all the dark or black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own herds apart by themselves, and did not put them with Laban's flock. Furthermore, whenever the stronger of the flock were breeding, Joseph, Jacob would place the branches in the sight of the flock in the watering troughs, so they would meet and conceive among the branches. But when the flock was sickly, he did not put the branches there. So the sicker animals were Liban's and the stronger Jacob's. So Jacob became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Jacob heard that, that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken away everything that was our father's, and from what belonged to our father, he has acquired all this wealth and honor. Jacob noticed the attitude of Laban and saw that it was not friendly toward him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your people, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to his flock in the field, and he said to them, I see your father's attitude, that he is not friendly towards me as he was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said, The speckled shall be your wages, then the entire flock gave birth to speckled. And if he said, the streaked shall be your wages, then the entire flock gave birth to streaked. Thus God has taken away the flocks of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flock conceived that I looked up and saw in a dream that the rams which mated were streaked and speckled and spotted. And the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, Look up and see. All the rams which are mating are streaked and speckled and spotted. For I have seen all that Liban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now stand up, leave this land, and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted by him as foreigners? For he sold us to you in marriage and has also entirely used up our purchase price. Surely all the riches which God has taken from our father are ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has told you to do, do it. Then Jacob stood and put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his livestock and all his property which he had acquired the livestock he had obtained and accumulated in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to share his sheep, 
Rachel went and stole her father's household gods. And Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he intended to leave, and he slipped away secretly. So he fled with everything that he had, and got up and crossed the river, and set his face towards the hill country of Gilead. On the third day after his departure, Laban was told that Jacob had fled. So he took his relatives with him and pursued him for seven days, and they overtook him in the hill country of Gilead. God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream at night and said to him, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent on the hill, and Laban with his relatives camped on the same hill of Gilead. Then Laban said to Jacob, What do you mean by deceiving me and leaving without my knowledge and carrying off my daughters as if they were captives of the sword? Why did you run away secretly and deceive me and not tell me so that I might have sent you away with joy and with songs and with tambourine and lyre? And why did you not allow me to kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye? Now you have done a foolish thing. It is in my power to harm you. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful not to speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Now I suppose you felt you must go, because you were homesick for your father's house and family. But why did you steal my household gods? Jacob answered Laban, I left secretly because I was afraid, for I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. The one with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, search my possessions and point out whatever you find that belongs to you and take it. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the idols. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and the tent of the two maids but he did not find them. Then he came out of Leah's tent and in entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household idols and put them in the camel's saddle bag and sat on them. Laban searched through all her tent, but did not find them. So Rachel said to her father, Do not be displeased, my lord, that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of women is on me, and I am unwell. He searched, but did not find the household idols. Then Jacob became angry and argued with Laban. And he said to Laban, What is my fault? What is my sin that you have pursued me like this? Although you have searched through all my possessions, what have you found of your household goods? Put it here before my relatives and your relatives, so that they may decide who has done right between the two of us. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not lost their young, nor have I eaten the rams of your flocks. I did not bring you the torn carcasses of the animals. I took the loss. You required of me everything that was stolen, whether it occurred by day or by night. This was my situation. By day, the heat consumed me, and by night, the cold, and I could not sleep. These twenty years, I have been in your house. I have served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for my share of your flocks, and you have changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been with me, most certainly you would have sent me away now empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and humiliation and the labor of my hands, so he rendered judgment and rebuked you last night. Laban answered Jacob, These women that you married are my daughters, and these children are my grandchildren. These flocks are, f are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do today to these my daughters or their children to whom you have given birth? So come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it serve as a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a mound of stones, and they ate a meal together on the mound. Laban called it Jegar Sahuda, stone, which means stone monument of destiny. But Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, 
This mound is a witness today between you and me. Therefore, he called the name Galid and Mizpah. For Laban said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you should mistreat my daughters, or if you should take other wives beside my daughters, although no one is with us as a witness, see and remember, God is witness between you and me. Laban said to Jacob, Look at this mound and look at this pillar which I have set up between you and me. This mound is a witness and this pillar is a witness that I will not pass by this mound to harm you and that you will not pass by this mound and this pillar to harm me. The God of Abraham and the God of Nehor and the God of their father judge between us. But Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Jacob, then Jacob offered a sacrifice to the Lord on the mountain and served his relatives and called his relatives to the meal and they ate food and spent the night on the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban got up and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters goodbye and pronounced a blessing on them. Then Jacob, then Laban left and returned home. So, you know that, um, you know, we established when we started reading the Bible, you know, we've been reading it sequentially from Genesis to Revelation. We established that um, when Jacob, um, was the word, when he deceived his brother and he had to run away, right? He was running for his life. So he didn't have time to gather goats, gather sheep, gather crops gather um cattle or silver and gold he just ran with only his staff we'll get to the next chapter where jacob tells us that he left with only his staff in his hand that's all he took so he was he didn't have any money he ran without money so he got to the house of liban and he wanted to marry but he didn't have money to pay a bride price. He, he couldn't even feed himself, talk less of pay a bride price. So in those days, if you didn't have money to pay a bride price, you had to work seven years for the woman. But while you're working those seven years, they are not necessarily paying you a salary. Your salary is the wife. While you're working those seven years, you are not being paid a salary. Your salary is the wife. So they will just give you enough to eat and to drink. But in terms of like money, savings, they are, you are not paying you anything. Because if they pay you and they give you the wife, that's double payment. So Laban, got, Jacob got there. He worked seven years for Rachel. Was not paid a dime. Was just giving food to eat and a place to sleep. So by the time he got Rachel and some little, little things to take care of himself. Sorry, they gave him Leah. He now had to work another seven years for Rachel. So see the depth of the suffering that Jacob went through. So after working for 14 years, he was still broke. He didn't have anything. It was just his two wives and his children. No money, no sheep of his own, no flocks, nothing. So after working for 14 years, he now approached Laban. And this is what he now said. What is it? He came to Laban and he said, and it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was a little which thou hast, and now it is increased unto a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee since my coming. And now, when shall I provide for mine own house? He says, and now, when shall I provide for my own house? So Jacob was saying, I've worked for you all these years. All I got was your daughters. 
So how will I provide for them? He didn't have his own money. He didn't have his own money. So he now entered into an arrangement with Laban. And at this time, when he works for Laban, he will actually be paid his salary. But the salary was not going to be paid in money. It was going to be paid in sheep and goats and cattle. And so that at the end of the time, Jacob can live and have sheep, goats, cattle that he can use to take care of his family. So the agreement they entered into is that normally when you have sheep and goats and everything, they usually come out with one color. Sheep are usually white or white. Goats are usually all brown or all black. And cattle are usually all white. But sometimes some of the sheep will come out with black spots. So they'll be white, but they'll have black spots. Or they'll be white and they will have black stripes. So the, you have a few of those kind of sheep. So Jacob entered into an agreement with Laban that I will continue to keep your flock, right? But all the sheep that have dark spots on them, those sheep will be my own. And all the sheep that have stripes on them, those sheep will also be my own. They are usually very few, but that was what he agreed with Laban. And Laban said, as we have agreed, let it be. But immediately they agreed. Laban now went and gathered all the sheep that had black black spots and, had, and that had stripes and took them away from the flock. So Jacob now began to work for Laban again. So in order to now get sheep that were striped and that had spots, Jacob went and picked rods or branches of trees. Then he peeled the branches of trees so that the white, you know, when, if, you, if you've ever peeled a branch, when you peel the branch, inside of the branch is white. So he peeled the branch of the trees so that the white will show. Then when the cattle or the sheep were mating, the female and the male sheep were mating, he will place that rod, that white part of the rod in front of the sheep so they can gaze upon it while mating. So his belief was, if the sheep saw whites while meeting, then when they give birth, the sheep that they give birth to will have spots on it. So it will be his sheep. So that was what he did. And when he did it, when the sheep gave birth, they actually gave birth to striped and spotted sheep. So he kept doing that and the sheep kept giving back birth to striped and spotted sheep. But when he... So in verse 31, at the end of verse 30, the Bible lets us know that he had increased and he had gotten so many cattle, he has gotten so many sheep, so many goats. At this point, he was even richer than Laban. He had become so wealthy that, in fact, all the cattle that Laban had had become his own. Miraculously, all of them were just given birth to speckled and striped cattle. So everything that Laban had was become his own. Laban was now poor and Jacob was now rich. It was so surprising. So at the end of the day, Laban and his sons were angry with Jacob. They were no longer friendly with him because in their mind, how is it possible that this guy has taken all our wealth? How come all the sheep suddenly are bringing out striped and dark spots and everything that was ours is now his? So they were angry and they were no longer friendly with him. At this time, God now came and appeared to Jacob. And God informed Jacob that the reason that all the sheep suddenly started bringing out striped and spotted sheep is not because you peeled rods and put them in front of the sheep. The Bible says that he lifted up his eyes and saw in a dream that he saw sheep that were mating with his own sheep, but these sheep were striped. He saw sheep that were mating in, with his sheep, but the sheep that were mating with his sheep were striped. But remember that Laban, immediately they had this agreement. Laban took away all the striped sheep. He came and took away all the striped and all the spotted sheep. So physically, there were not any striped or spotted sheep left by the time Jacob started working for, for this agreement. Laban had carried all of them and taken them away. So all that were left were the normal sheep who were all white and all black. So when Jacob saw this vision and he saw striped and spotted sheep sleeping with his sheep that made his sheep to give birth to striped and spotted, he knew that something spiritual happened and God had helped him. So he knew that it was not about what he was doing with, his, with the rods and putting them inside water. 
he now knew that God had helped him. So he called his wives and told them the story how God has helped him and that God had told him to leave. So his wives now began to explain to him that their father was even wicked to them. Seth. See what they said. They said, and Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us and had quite devoured also our money. So they said that we have nothing left in our father's house. He sold us in marriage like common articles of goods. Then the Bible says he devoured their money. So in those days, when you give your daughter a marriage and they pay you a bride price, you are supposed to keep that bride price for her. So it was like her insurance policy. You keep it, you don't spend it. So that in case her husband dies, she has something to fall back on. Or in case the man drives her away, he says he's not marrying again. He has something to fall back. She has something to fall back on. So the bride price, the dowry was not spent by the father. It was kept for, for the daughters. But in Laban's case, whatever Jacob produced by his labor, Laban, Laban spent it on himself. So the daughters were watching as he just sold them as common slaves, just so for his own gain. Then they also watched as he spent their dowry that was supposed to be an insurance for them and their children. Because if a woman in those days were not really working, if your husband died, you have children. How do you cater for them? So it's supposed to be an insurance. Laban spent it. So his daughters were not even happy with him. So they said, if God has told you to go, let us be going. We don't even have any insurance here. Our father has spent our money. So they agreed to leave. But before this, when Jacob came to Laban and told Laban that I've worked for you for 14 years. So please, I need a wage. Let me go. Start. I need, I need to work so that I can have something for myself so that I can leave. Do you know what Laban said? Laban said, please don't go. He said, because I, I know by divination. He says, I know by divination, the word in Hebrew, it means to divine, to consult with spirits. Is it a translated divination or enchantments? He said, I know by divination or by enchantments, by magic, by witchcraft, that God had blessed you for my sake. He says, I know by divination that God had blessed me because of you. So Laban Immediately Jacob came to Laban's house. Laban began to prosper like no man's business. His cows just started multiplying. His sheep just started multiplying. Everything was just blowing up. And Laban was like, what is this? What's going on? So remember that Laban is an idol worshiper. He has idols. He consults with demons, with spirits. So in order to find out what is going on, how come I just became rich? All of a sudden, he now began to divine to consult with spirits. And by consulting with spirits, he noticed that God was with Jacob. And that as long as Jacob was in his house, he will be blessed. So this is the reason he actually tricked Jacob and gave him Rachel instead of Leah. Because he noticed that as long as Jacob is here, I am blessed. As long as Jacob is here, my business will prosper. So after seven years, when Jacob was about to get Rachel, and once he gets Rachel, he has gone. He knew that he will not prosper again. So in order to trap Jacob there, he, he switched the women and gave him Leah. So he walked another seven years. So after working for the two of them, Jacob wants to go and Laban still says he should not go. Why? Because God had blessed him because of Jacob. So anyways, after the whole fiasco and God transferred the wealth of Laban to Jacob, Jacob now ran away. He didn't tell Laban he was going. He just disappeared with all the children, with all the sheep. He ran. So when Laban heard that Jacob had run away, Laban now began to pursue Jacob. So when he got close to Jacob, the Bible says God appeared to him in a dream. And he said, do not speak to Jacob either good or bad. That's a Hebrew word. That's a Hebrew way of saying don't do anything to him. Don't touch him. God came and threatened Laban. He warned him in a dream. He said, do not do nothing, either good or bad. Don't even touch him. Don't do anything to him. So Laban, the next day, caught up with Jacob and told him the story. He said, I was coming here. He even says, it is in my power to do harm to you. But the God of your father had appeared to me. So in other words, 
you don't know what I would have done if God did not threaten me. That's what he was telling Jacob. So anyways, he was like, so now you've run away with my, my children, his daughters, you ran away with my grandchildren. <laughs> he was even saying, all these sheep and goats is my own. You ran away with everything you didn't tell me. And I said, no problem. But why did you now steal my idols? So that was the most, now the most important thing is that his idols that he uses to call practice witchcraft, to divine, to enchant, to check people's destinies, to see the one that is prospering so you can trap him. Why did you take my idols? And Jacob was very angry. Jacob now began to recount. When you now study, so if you study how shepherds worked in those days, it's very hard work. So people imagine that when someone was a shepherd, maybe you just take the sheep, you just throw around your compound and while the sheep is, are eating, then you are just sitting down watching the sheep. Then when you finish, you just bring them inside the house. That's not how they did it though. That's not how they did it. Remember that these people stayed in a rocky area, a mountainous region, a place that was dry. So it was very, it was difficult to find grass. So it's not like you just take the sheep and you just trek two, cent two centimeters and you find grass and they eat. No. Many times the shepherd will take the sheep and he will travel with the sheep for six months. They will give him sheep the sheep, when they give him, they are small, tiny, tiny sheep. There is not enough grass around where they are. So they will travel with the sheep for six months. So when they travel, they will travel from a place that is dry to a place that has grass. And the shepherd will be there with the sheep for six months. He will eat, he will sit down with the sheep during the day. He will sit down with the sheep during the night. This is what Jacob was explaining to Laban. Look at what he said. He said, these 20 years, I have served thee. He said, thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young. The rams of thy flocks have I not eaten. He said, thus I was. In the day, the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. He says, in the day, drought consumed me. So he kept sheep during the day. He says, in the night, the frost consumed me. He kept sheep by night. And he said, my sleep departed from my eyes. He didn't sleep. You can't sleep if you travel with sheep. Because you know if they're in your house, you put them inside the barn, then they are safe. But when you travel to a, a distant land with the sheep, you can't sleep. Because if you sleep, a lion will come and tear the sheep while you are sleeping. So it was labor. It was hard work. If you think he was just sitting down in Laban's house for those, he wasn't. He would take the sheep, he would travel. He will be there. Maybe nine. This is how they used to do it. They entered into contracts those days with shepherds. You will take the sheep for a whole year. When you come back, you will give account. If I gave you 10 sheep, when you come back, you come back with those 10 sheep. They, will, they entered into contracts. They signed it. So he will take the sheep. He will travel. He will feed them until they are not. They are very big. Then he will bring them back and give account. So this is what he was now explaining. He said, that which was torn of beasts, I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. So some of the sheep, wild animals, killed them. Jacob would have died doing this job. He said, that which was torn of beasts, I brought not unto thee. Some of the sheep, wild animals, killed them. It was a dangerous job. It was labor. It was hard. It was very hard labor. And he did this for 20 years. So when they now entered into the agreement about all the sheep will be striped, and all the sheep, all the sheep that are striped and all the sheep that are spotted will be for Jacob. The Bible now says that Laban changed Jacob's wages 10 times. So they will agree that all the sheep that are both striped and spotted, right? They have stripes or they have spots will be Jacob's sheep. When Laban now notices that all the sheep are striped, he will not come and change the agreement. He will not say, no, 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 from today we are not doing stripe. The stripe will not be your own. Let the spotted be your own. As he makes that an agreement, from that day, everything becomes spotted. He will come back again. He will notice that all the sheep are now spotted. He will change it. He will not say, no, no, we are not doing spotted. We are doing stripe. We are going back to stripes. Jacob will agree. Immediately he makes that agreement. Everything will become stripes. This is what Jacob was saying. He, this is what he was telling his, his daughters. Look at what he said. Let me look for the particular verse. I found it. He said, and your father deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God allowed him not to hurt me. 
if he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring strict or the striped shall be thy wages, then all the cattle were striped. That's what he said. He said, your father had deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God allowed him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled or the spotted shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the striped shall be thy wages, then all the cattle were striped. Because God was the one supernaturally helping Jacob. Anything Laban, if Laban said all of them will be brown, anyone that is brown that is your own, from that day, every sheep that comes out will be brown. If he comes back and says, all the ones that are white will be on. From that day, all that come out white, every sheep will come out white. If he says the yellow ones will be on, from that day, all will be yellow. So he changed Jacob's wages, attempting to cheat him 10 times. But as he changed the God to help Jacob. So that's how come all the cattle became Jacob's own. Because any cattle that gave birth, any term that Laban gave Jacob, that, that's how that cattle came out. If he said white, it was white. If he said striped, it was striped. If he said brown, it was brown. If he said yellow, it was yellow. And after he did this for long, every single cattle that came out was for Jacob. Jacob was so wealthy that Laban became poor. All the wealth of Laban transferred to Jacob. So Jacob was angry with Laban when Laban came and confronted him. And Jacob was now explaining how he had worked hard for him for 20 years. All he had done was cheat him. All he had done was deceive him and try and send him away empty-handed. And he said, if not for the God of my father Abraham, the fear of Isaac, you would have sent me away empty. He now said, since you are accusing me of taking my gods, go and search. If anybody you find it with, let them die. You know, I was the person who was going to kill the person. Anybody you find these gods with, they will not live long. They will die. But he didn't know that Rachel stole the gods. So Laban now went, searched all the tents, searched Leah's tent. You know that Jacob had two other wives, the concubines of Leah and Rachel, Bilhah and Zippah and Zilpah. He searched those people's tents, he didn't find it. He now entered Rachel's tent. Rachel had sat down on top of the idols because they were small, small images. They are like doll babies. They are as small as baby dolls. So that's how they made those idols in those days. So she sat down on top of the idols. So when she entered, she now told her that, she told Liban that I'm on my period, I can't stand up. She said, the manner of women is with me. She said, forgive thy Lord, thy daughter, thy daughter can't stand, for the manner of women is with me. So she said she's on her period, so she can't stand. So the Lacob set the entire tent, but he didn't ask Rachel to stand up because he thought she was on her period. She even lied. So he came out, he didn't find the idols. So Jacob now said, now that you've not found it, you've wasted our time, so please come and be going. So <laughs> Laban now called Jacob and said, let's swear an oath. Because now he was not afraid of Jacob. This guy came suddenly all my wealth entered his hand i was coming to to attack him his god came and threatened me in the night so he now came and swore and i said come let's enter an oath say from today you will not do anything bad to me i will not do anything bad to you they now raised up raised up stones and said these stones will be a witness between two of us that from today you will not hurt me i will not hurt you you will not hurt my daughters and in fact, this, this is just how we are going to do it. So they swore, they entered into a covenant, they ate together. Then he got up the next day, Laban kissed his daughters, kissed his sons, and he left. So the Bible also says that Jacob offered a sacrifice at this time. So we can see the attitude of Jacob when he was oppressed. He was being cheated, he was being deceived. He was being maligned, he was being oppressed, but he walked with all his strength and all his heart. And because he walked with all his strength and all his heart, God fought for him. God fought for him. So you see people today that let's say their employer is not treating them well. They now began to they now begin to walk in a lackadaisical manner. They treat the job anyhow. You say, well, after all, I'm not appreciated. Are you all right? Are you all right? The Bible says we walk as unto God. It's not about who is appreciated. We walk as unto God. Jacob labored as they were cheating this guy he was laboring. With all his heart, with all his strength, he didn't allow the sheep to die. 
the ones that wild animals killed is because he couldn't protect them. He said, none of your ewes cast their young. He said, by day I was awake. By night I was awake. Drought consumed me. Frost consumed me. My sleep departed from me. He was walking as if they were paying him in billions. Yes, he was being cheated. And after he walked for so long, God came and said, said I have seen thy labor and thy affliction. And God personally fought for him. Because in God's eyes, Laban is unrighteous. Jacob is righteous. Laban cheated Jacob and Jacob walked as unto God. So when God came, God punished Laban and fought for Jacob. But when you now say, I'm not appreciated, you now do the job anyhow. You and your employer are guilty in the eyes of God. They are guilty of not, of, of not paying you. Then you, you are guilty of working anyhow. You are guilty of treating the job anyhow. You say they are not paying you, you now steal. You now mismanage resources. They say, come by nine, you are you arrive by 12. When God comes to judge, both you and the employer are guilty. He will judge both of you because the Bible says we walk as unto God. Colossians chapter three. It says, servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. It says, whatsoever ye do, you do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So there is nothing like, they are not treating me well, so I do the job anyhow. You are not doing it for men. There's nothing like they are not appreciating me, so you do it anyhow. You are not doing it for men. There's nothing like they didn't tell me thank you, so you do it anyhow. You are not doing it for men. There's nothing like they are not paying me. Even if they are not paying you, you are doing it as unto God. If you want to leave, leave. If they are not paying you, leave. But as long as you are there, you walk as unto God. If you are doing it in church, there's nothing like, oh, my pastor insulted me. They, don't, they are not even paying me. Is volunteer, so you do it anyhow. You walk as unto God. God. Then he said, and what he now says, knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. So when you walk as unto God, if they don't pay you, God will pay you. The reward is from God. Anywhere you go and you walk with all your heart, if they maltreat you, no problem. Walk with all your heart. The Bible says you have a reward and inheritance. God rewarded Jacob, over rewarded him. He became wealthy. Even though they, they continually oppressed this guy, this guy continually walked with all his heart. And God rewarded him. So it's two things. When they are oppressing you, they are not paying you, they are not treating you well, they are not appreciating you, they are always complaining. Work hard. Because you are not doing it for them. Do it as unto God. Do it diligently. Do it excellently. It's two things. Either God will reward you there or he will reward you somewhere else. Either in the presence of those same people, God will exalt you in that company or when you leave, the reward will meet you. Ten, two years later, four years later, you will get a job that your faith could not carry. You know that your faith did not bet this job. The amount they are paying you, you didn't ask for it. It's 10 times what you earned last time. And it came out of nowhere. You will not know that it's because of the labor you labored. Because by this time, it's five years after you left that company. The reward may not come immediately. It will come after five years. You will just get a, an offer, a call from nowhere. Are you available? Come and take this job. And you will be surprised. Someone will just call you. Come and take this house. Come and take this car. You will be shocked. You will be wondering, where did this favor come from? Where did I sow it? You sowed it when you were working working under affliction so you see people now they say they are not paying me they are stealing are you all right they will now still say after all they are not paying us so they steal the company's resources they steal money if god comes you and the employer two of you are guilty they didn't pay you 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 stole god punishes both of you he punishes two of you in fact he can even punish only you because the reason they are not paying you is because they don't have money. The company is truly struggling. So they are not paying you because they don't want to pay you. They are struggling. Then you, you stall out of your free will. So when God comes, it's you. He will punish. You will be surprised. You will be very surprised. So we walk as unto God. Anything we do, our real master is in heaven. So we do it diligently. 
if you're handling anything for God, there's nothing I am volunteering. You know, people, when you think when it comes to things of God, they just treat it like, oh, well, I do it, it at my free time when it's convenient, it's volunteer. What is volunteer? You are you are a laborer, you are working for God, and you have a reward if you do it well. So there's nothing like when is when is when the when you know, especially when, when either they are church workers or they just think they are doing God a favor. So they just do the things of God anyhow. You have a master in heaven, he's watching. He's watching. So this Laban, a witch, wizard, consulter with spirits. When Jacob arrived in the house of Laban, Laban divined, enchanted, consulted with his demons. He studied the destiny of Jacob. He knew that as long as Jacob is here, I'll be blessed. So he devised a strategy to pin Jacob down and was prospering with the destiny of Jacob. This is what happens. You know when people say they use your destiny to prosper? People go to a company and it's, they, they, you know you hear those kind of things and people just say, oh, people are just being over spiritual. It's in the Bible. He is in the Bible. This guy got to the house of Laban. He was supposed to walk and live after a few, maybe months. Laban checked his destiny. This guy is prosperous. Laban pinned him to the spot. He pinned Jacob down. So if you think it's only about physical things, Jacob was pinned spiritually. He could not live. Even if he wanted to leave, he, could, he would never have left. He took God to come and intervene. He took God to come and set Jacob free, to tell him to leave. When he left, Laban pursued him. And God came and warned Laban because it's not just physically that Laban was stuck there, spirit that Jacob was stuck there, spiritually was stuck. If you think those idols were just for asking questions, you've never been to a shrine. You don't know how witchcraft works. They pinned Jacob's destiny in Laban's house. You've never, you are not a witch, so you will not know. So you think he was just looking at idols. This guy is a wizard, enchanter. He studied his destiny. He trapped him so he could not leave. Have you not seen people that are working in places? They are not paying them. They can't go. They are maltreating him. They can't go. They are complaining. They still can't go. They are stuck there. You think it's just physical? It's not physical. So people just, they just take decisions. No prayer. It's foolishness. Any job, they just fly. Any opportunity, they just fly. Just use brain. Just use sentiment. That's how Jacob used brain. After all, this guy is my family member. He's my uncle. He's my mother's, mother's brother. He will not maltreat me. He's a witch. You will never know. He got there. They, he stuck. He was there 20 years. Are you, how can you be working for someone for 20 years? He's even maltreating you for 20 years. You are not. You don't live. For 20 years, you are, you are stuck in one spot. You are not prospering. You are not increasing. You are not getting money. The guy is just becoming wealthy. You that is praying. You that in the covenant. You that know God. You are stuck. You have no money. He that is worshiping idols. He is using your destiny to prosper. Lack of prayer, lack of asking God, using brain for everything. People will talk, then they will come and blame God and say God is not blessing them. Until prayer entered into Jacob's life, he could never leave this place. Until God began to speak, until he got to a place where he could discern the voice of God. When God spoke and said, get out, and he heard, he would have died in Laban's house. Laban will never let him go. He, he will, it will surprise him. It will surprise him. So, you see the wickedness of Liban. That this guy left, he first maltreated him. Maltreated him for 20 years, 20 whole years. He walked there, they maltreated him. When he finished, let this guy go in peace. He has walked, let him enjoy his retirement. They still, he still pursued him. In retirement, he still pursued him. But he pursued him, but God stood with him. Ah, when God is for you, anybody that wants to pursue you, let them pursue you. At their detriment, let them pursue you. You can't be afraid. Don't you know who with the God that you serve? He pursued this guy. And God said, Do neither good nor bad. When you know your God, you are you are as Mount Zion. You cannot be moved. You are strong. Ah. The men that know their God, they are strong. You can't be afraid. You can't shake. You are like a mountain. Because you serve the Lord of hosts. He is the God of armies. He can't fight. He says the Lord is a man of war. He says he will stir up jealousy like a mighty man. He will cry out. He will prevail against his enemies. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He says he stretches out his right hand. He consumes his enemies. By the greatness of his might, his enemies, they depart from him. He says he has broken Rahab in pieces. He has broken Egypt with the sword. He is great. He is mighty. He can fight for his people. So you can't be afraid. Unless you don't know the God that you are saving, you can never be afraid. You can never. Because God fights for his people. Jacob was even praying. He was running. 
as he was running. God was running after Laban. Ha! You know, sometimes it looks like God is just watching your enemies. Why is he watching them oppress me? God watched Laban chase Jacob for seven days. When he got close to Jacob, in fact, Jacob's mind, God, won't you want this guy? Is he, will you allow him to come and kill me? When he got close, God showed up and warned Liban. If you touch him, you will find out. You will find out. People that were with God, you can't touch them. You can't. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for, my, for their sakes. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. People that are afraid, you don't know your God. That's why you are not strong. You can't do exploits. You don't read your Bible. You don't behold the face of the Elohim, the Yahweh, the almighty God, the one who moves mountains, the ones who can send his armies into Egypt and break the hand of Pharaoh and rescue his people from the bondage, from affliction. He is the mighty God. So if you are in any form of bondage, any form of affliction, you must know your God. Your confidence is in God, that God will serve, that God will deliver you. Because sometimes you are going around trying to solve the affliction, trying to keep, trying to, I mean, talk to people, trying to <clears throat> go through processes, and it looks like things are not working. Even if processes fail, even if people ignore you, God will fight for you. Jacob didn't have any process. If it was today, some people go and call police. That see, oh, this guy is chasing me. There was no police. There was nobody to report to. There is no firefighter. There is no. HR, let's go and report the matter to HR. See, these people are doing, there's nobody to report to, but God fought for him. So we've been studying the life of Jacob, and we see how those of us who have been in this room, who have been with us, who have been with us from, from the beginning, or at least from when we started Genesis, from the from the time we started studying Jacob, we see how Jacob is a man of his own strength. He doesn't pray about anything. <laughs> anything he wants to do, he does by his strength. So he wants the blessing, he will not pray. Or the, the birthright, he will not pray, he will deceive his brother. He wants the birthright, he will not pray, he will deceive his father. He wants a wife, he is broke, he will not ask God, he will work, he will labor for it. He wants, it's the, they tricked him, he will still not pray, he will labor for it. Then he wants money from Liban so he can take care of his family. Liban is cheating this guy. This guy is still not praying. What kind of human being is this? Still not asking God for help. He's busy peeling, peeling rods, putting them inside water, trying to produce the result by himself. But he now got to a point that he finally learned that we don't do things by physical strength. After he tried all these years and suffered and suffered. So you know the thing about your physical strength. It will work for some time. So you, you think you don't need God, that prayer is a waste of time. Until you confront a challenge that your physical strength cannot solve, you will, you will encounter something. You will call all your family members. You will call all your connections. You will use all your money. You will try everything. Nothing will work. It's when you get there that you now know that it is the wise men that trust in the Lord, that the arm of the flesh will fail, that those that run to go down into Egypt, they shall be ashamed and confounded, and the shame of Egypt shall be their shame. That's when you will find out that Egypt cannot help anybody. So, he confronted the blessing. He used his strength. He got it. Confronted the birthright. He used his strength. He got it. Confronted, I need a wife. He used his strength. He got it. Even when they tricked him, he used his strength. He got it. He now got to a place where it's time to leave Laban's house. His strength cannot deliver him. Laban, this one is a wizard. You don't use physical strength to overcome him. You can't just use strength to deceive Laban. He's a diviner. Before you come from the left, he has come from the right. So he got there. He used strength, used everything. He could not leave. And after trying everything, the Bible says God showed up to him in a dream. And he said, lift up thine eyes. See all the rams which leap upon the sheep are ring streak and speckled, speckled. So he saw that it was God that helped him. He now said, if not for the God of my father. He didn't say, if not that I knew how to peel rods, peel branches and put them inside water. He says, if not for the God of my father. He saw that spiritually God was impregnating his own cattle. So that they were multiplying. That even when Laban would change it 10 times, anything he changed it to is not normal. That you would change the, the terms 10 times. And if you say white, it's white. If you say black, all of them give, them give birth to black. If you say yellow, all of them give birth to yellow. It was not normal. He saw that God helped him. When he finally got it, Jacob began to lean on God. Such that a man that was prayerless for 97 years finally offered a sacrifice unto God. 
a man that was prayerless 97 years by this time jacob is 97 he's not a small boy he has never prayed once never asked god for help once never but at the end of this chapter the bible says jacob offered a sacrifice unto god because through suffering <laughs> through struggling through affliction he finally learned that the arm of flesh will fail that those that trust in the flesh they are already onto a cause you say woe to the man that trusted in flesh he's already cursed he can never help but those that know they are god they are the ones that are strong they are like mount zion they cannot be moved he doesn't suffer thy feet to be moved he's their keeper he's their shade upon thy right hand the sun does not smite them by day neither the moon by night the lord preserves them from all evil he preserves their soul those ones they can never be moved the lord is the portion of their inheritance and of their cup he maintains their lot they can never be moved they cup finally after 20 years so what i'm asking you now is how long will it take you to learn that it's only by trusting in god that you will survive because if you do the root of jacob you will suffer too for 20 years you may finally learn it you will make mistakes you will struggle you will suffer hardship you will enter in situations that you can't come out of so it's two things either you do it the root of jacob and suffer then you finally learn it and struggle and fight battles you are not supposed to fight then you learn that we trust in the lord when you learn it god will shift your destiny because sometimes before god moves you to the next level god is waiting for you to learn something it's like a class you're in primary two you must pass the exam before you go to primary three if you don't pass you can be in primary two for 40 years it's not by age it's not by age it's by passing the exam it's by learning the lesson so jacob was in the Laban's house not really because Laban was a witch, but because Jacob did not know that we trust in the Lord. So he was stuck there for 20 years. The moment he left, lent it, God said, go now to the land of your fathers. So some people are stuck on one spot spiritually, stuck on one spot in their destiny, stuck on one spot in their, in their, in the purpose and plan of God for their life. Because one lesson, they've not lent it. The God has been teaching them this lesson for the past 20 years. For some people, it's prayerfulness. You are asking God to bless you. You don't know you need to be prayerful. So God will wake you up in the night to pray, you will sleep. You wake up in the night to pray, you sleep. As you continue sleeping, you remain on one level. You will never move anywhere spiritually. For some people, it's self-control. Where God is taking you, there are too many loose women. So you need to be able to gird your loins and close your laps and zip your pants. But where you are now, you are constantly fornicating. And you've been doing it for five years, saying we're under grace. So as long as you continue fornicating, you will remain on one spot. Pay tight, pay offering, you go nowhere. Because where God wants to take you, the Delilahs are plenty. The Jezebels are plenty. So as much as you refuse to learn to close your legs and zip your trouser, saying we're under grace and foolishly wasting the grace of God, you will never go anywhere. Some people is anger lack of self-control if they slap you you slap them back if they insult you you insult them back if people do anything you must revenge you don't know that you will get to a level where if you make one mistake out of anger you die in the wilderness if god says speak to the rock and you strike the rock you die in the wilderness so your lack of learning self-control will keep you on one spot in destiny for some people they don't know anything about the word of god they think we do things by hard work you want to prosper in your business by hard work you want to prosper in your career by hard work you don't know that some companies they are full of labor when you get there you will know that it's not masters they used to survive that if you cannot wage war against the prince of Persia, they will kill you in that company they strike your wife with cancer they kill your children just because they, they don't want you to go forward so when you are saying god lift me take me forward in my career god is looking at the labors in the place he wants to take you and since you have not grown in spiritual warfare and if you go there they will kill your destiny they will kill you too god will keep you on one spot so the lesson that you refuse to learn is what will keep you on one spot so you don't understand the things of god god is a time of he's a god of times and seasons. in a season there's something you're supposed to learn in in jesus's season of temptation he was supposed to overcome satan in that 40 days it's not just 40 days in terms of time because if jesus entered that wilderness and in that 14 days he didn't, he didn't overcome satan he will remain there until he overcomes satan so the 40 days is not just 40 literal days a lesson must be learned so if god tells you i will do this for you in two years and in those two years you don't learn the lesson my brother you will extend it you will extend it another two years then you will say god is not faithful a word came to me two years has passed my brother it's not just time what is god saying what is god teaching you what are you supposed to learn 